you're having a good day. Happy Tuesday. I hope everything is going well in your world. All right, so since it's Tuesday, I'm here to talk about content. I'm here to talk about social media marketing, all of that good stuff. Um, so today I want to talk to you about Facebook groups, this is something that people have been uh, asking me about recently. I really try to make sure that the lives are responsive to what people are asking me about. So again, if you have questions about this stuff, just let me know. Shoot me a message. Honestly, you're a great muse for me. <laughs> I want to know what you're struggling with. That way I can put this together for you. Anyways, Facebook groups have been um, a big thing. So the thing about social media content strategy and content strategy in general is it's a relational process and it's trying to figure out how to be strategic about that process. You want to be authentic, you want to be human, but you also are trying to figure out what does that process look like? You know, people say, tell me exactly what to say, exactly where to say it, exactly who to say it to and when. Um, the analogy I'm going to go through this with you is I want you to think about if you're dating and you're single. So if you're trying to meet someone, what do you do? You go to the places where you have a higher chance of meeting someone else. You may work on your pickup lines, you know, your confidence, your conversational skills. But even though you're going to a bar where you know that like single people hang out, for example, we're entrepreneurs, we go to groups where other entrepreneurs hang out, even though you're going to the singles bar, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to, you know, go home with a phone number, that you're going to go home with a person, <laughs> depending on how successful you are. So think of it more as dating. We're trying to come up with a strategy of where are the single bars where the singles hang out? Um, how can we talk to people in a way that makes us not so awkward or anything like that? Um, cause you can't, there are things about this process that you can't control. You can optimize your chances, um, but you can't guarantee success. You're going to have to take risks. You're going to have to have conversations with people and try things that won't always work out. However, we can increase our success. So, um, I'm going to try and <laughs> run through this fairly quickly. I have a Hebrew lesson in like 25 minutes. So hopefully this will be a little bit on the shorter side. I know I tend to go on for a while. So anyways, the, I want to establish the parameters that this whole Facebook um, group marketing and um, is what we're doing is we're doing lead generation and lead nurturing. We're trying to find people that will want to work with us and we're trying to nurture them to a place where they want to keep working with us. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of funnels, 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 sales, funnel, marketing funnels. Basically, the, uh, the concept is it's just like you basically have like a triangle shape. At the top of the triangle, there is the biggest amount. This is where you're talking to all the people, all the general people. And the triangle, the funnel, has different levels. And at the very top, the widest part of it is awareness. You are helping people be aware of you, aware of the service you provide, sometimes aware of how their life can be better with your help. You are just spreading awareness. But not everyone that you make aware of your product is going to go down to this more narrow level. Now, the levels have different names depending on the kind of business you have, how expensive your product is, etc., etc. But in general, awareness is the very top level, and that's what lead generation is. You're just trying to get people aware of what you do and ideally connect with people who would want to potentially keep going down in that funnel with you, right? So up here at the top, you're just trying to um, get people aware of yourself and what you do. This is where your lead generation is coming in. This is why you're friending people and getting connected in groups, right? And it does come down eventually. So what we're doing is, again, you're not just gonna walk up to someone on the street. <laughs> I've read this analogy I like today and say, hi, my name is Heather, and then kiss them on the mouth. It's just not how it works. Sales is relational. Sales has multiple facets to it. So it's a process of that connection over time, of that relationship building. So here in this top level, you have awareness, and you're trying to bring it down to the people who actually want to buy from you. They're aware of it. They're interested in you and your services. They're considering buying from you. Okay, now they really want to and are interested in buying from you, and they actually purchase. It takes multiple steps, right? This is the funnel we're talking about. So the way that Facebook groups move in this or related to this um, you're, like I said, generating leads. You are going to be joining groups. You're going to be friending people. You are just trying to get connected with people on that top level. And then you're trying to shorten that list and make it smaller by lead nurturing. It's got multiple levels. So your lead generation by joining groups, friending people, 
And then as you nurture, the list will become smaller. I have talked to plenty of people and pitched in plenty of groups um, and it hasn't panned out, right? You are going to be talking to a lot of people on this top level and a lot of them won't make it all the way down. You kind of have to be mentally prepared for that. And it's really hard in the beginning when you're discouraged and you're just like, am I doing it wrong? And you're probably not polished in your sales pitch. It's okay, keep practicing. That's the hard part in the beginning. You're kind of practicing. Just like if you're going to a singles bar, you're kind of getting used to how to hit on people, right? It's kind of the same process, kind of the same concept, right? So you join the group, you send the friend request, and then you nurture these people, you nurture these relationships and these leads. You um, comment on what they post. You um, maybe ask them to do a, a networking call to get to know each other better. Um, maybe you have a freebie or a lead magnet that'd be helpful for them and you share it in the group or with them. Um, you get to a point where you can send them a DM. This is how you are able to continue to nurture these leads, to try and lead them through this process where they come down to the point of being willing to buy from you. Um, again, if you want to have a business, you have to get the word out about it and you have to sell yourself. It's uncomfortable, but the bottom line is if you aren't selling yourself, if you aren't marketing yourself, then no one is. It falls on your shoulders. It's hard. But it's easier to kind of think that there is no one else coming. Like, um, oh, who's the chick who wrote the five second rule? Mel, Mel Robbins, is that her name? I can't remember right now. But she said like, you know, it's, it's easier to come with the, the thought, no one else is coming. I have to take care of this myself. So, and I know social media, social media might not be your, your platform, that's okay. Then find somewhere else to market and to sell, but you will have to do it somewhere. I'm just trying to help you figure out how to do it when it comes to Facebook groups. All right, so how many steps do I have today? Let me minimize my notes here. Okay, I've got four steps for going through this process and a PS at the end, just as a, a clincher reminder. So first things first, of course, find good groups and join them. Um, before you do, get a clear idea of who you wanna work with. Are you trying to work with um, young mothers? Are you trying to work with BAs and OBMs? Are you trying to work with uh, e-commerce stores? Who are you trying to work with? that will help inform what groups you're looking for. What are their interests? Um, what kind of entrepreneurs are in these groups? For example, most of my clients are female bookkeepers. So one place I can go, there are a ton of female entrepreneur groups. That's a great place to start. Um, so of course, you're looking for someone who's, if you're looking for client connections, there are other ways to get connected. You can get connected with other new entrepreneurs who are, you know, you want to support each other in some way, that's fine. That's a different person. It's a different strategy. But if you're looking for someone who will hire you, you want someone who has enough money to pay you for your services. They're not brand new. They're growing. They're overwhelmed. And they're at this point where honestly they have more money than time and they see the value of what you do. So don't feel like you have to chase all of these brand new entrepreneurs when it comes to this stuff it's okay to limit your field. You want to limit your field. So try and find people who are more established, who aren't brand new. Look and see how long their page has been up. Look and see how long they've been employed in their business. You can see that information on their profile as you research these people. Anyways, um, it's also gonna be someone who's comfortable with con business connections on Facebook. You're gonna get to a point where you friend people and they won't say yes. That's okay, that makes it easier. <laughs> Don't worry about them. You're going to be connecting with people who, I mean, think about it. If someone's in an entrepreneur group, they're an entrepreneur most likely, right? So they are there to help themselves in their business. So they're probably open to business connections um, and things of that nature, okay? Um, here's the thing with groups. It's, it takes a little bit of trial and error. Um, so you're going to be joining more groups than you actually stay in. So I'll tell you some red flags and good signs to look out for. Um, public groups, you can see posts. Private, you can't see posts. Um, so you will have to join and get accepted before you can see stuff. Uh, but don't worry, if you get in there and it's not the right group, it's easy to unjoin, get the heck out of here. You don't have to be everywhere. In the same way where I tell you, you don't need to be on every platform, it's better to do a deeper dive in relationships on a couple. Same with groups, maybe not two, maybe more like five or something like that, but yeah. So here's good signs for, for a Facebook group. Once you do get in and you see how everything works, here's what you need to keep in mind. You wanna find communities, not park billboards. 
You don't want a spammy group. You don't want to be able to post your service 400 times a day because if that's what you're doing, that's what everyone else is doing and they don't care what you have to offer. You want communities, not billboards. Look for groups that um, they have multiple daily posts and comments. Look for groups that when people ask a question, they're, first of all, they're asking questions, not just um, promoing themselves. Um, when they ask a question, people respond. People comment back and answer and help them. Um, private groups are usually more controlled and have more intention than a public group. And then if you try to join the group and ask you a couple of sign-up questions, great. It means an admin's there. Who, who cares? You want a little more control. You want higher quality. Um, there and also you actually kind of like it sounds kind of intuitive you'll be able to see the group rules usually when you sign up um if it has a no spam policy or they say promotional posts are only good on one day of the week that's actually a good sign because it's you want a community not a billboard we're building relationships not posting flyers all over facebook okay we're building relationships so and then so those are good signs of a good group um, red flags giant groups aren't always the best so you may get really excited if you get into a group with you know like 50,000 people or 10,000 people you may get washed away and you can use a search function a little bit where you can search bookkeeping and of course more posts will pop up but of course someone may have a single post may have a thousand replies and you get lost no one sees you so they aren't always the best giant groups are always the best try and find something that's more um I've seen good sweet spots between like a couple hundred and a few thousand. Engage is more important than numbers, but the giant ones you kind of get washed out. Again, if you're in there and everything is just, here's my link, here's my link, here's my link, and no one's commenting and no one's offering help, that's a billboard. You want a community. Get out. It will help you. Um, or if there's very little posting, very little activity, um, no replies to questions, you want a community. You don't want something that's like, you know, not active. You want to be interacting with people. Again, it takes a little bit of reading through it and that's frustrating, um, but you get a better feel for it in time. So those are red flags and good things. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm like counting down to my Hebrew lesson. Okay. <laughs> so step one, find and join groups. It takes a little bit of time to get sorted, get situated, stuff like that. And once you're in those groups, post and interact in them. So what to post and what to comment. First things first, something that's tricky with groups, you can get a lot of good relationships this way, but the problem is every group has different rules. So one group will let you promote yourself any day of the week. Another group says only on Fridays. Another group says never, and you need to keep track of it. But, uh, group admins are very territorial, and they don't want you spamming their group. They want their group to be a good place. So you need to follow the rules in the group by group. Um, if promo is allowed, even if it's one day of the week or whatever, always make sure to provide a link of some kind. You are providing a trail of breadcrumbs. If you're allowed to promote yourself, talk about your latest offer, your services, um, and add a link. Give them another place to go. Make it easy for them to follow up with you, learn more about you. Um, now, if promo isn't allowed, again, that's not a bad thing. You want to be in a community, not a billboard. So there are lots of ways you can still post it in this way that's smart, that's not spammy, that's good. Um, so here's some tips for this on what to post if promo isn't allowed. One, a big one, ask for advice. People love to give advice. They love, they love to give their opinion. And if you can, try and slip in something about what you do. That way they associate you with that. For example, you can ask, what's your preferred tool for social media management? I'm a bookkeeper and I struggle with this part of my business. So they know what you do, you're visible, and they're going to comment and give advice. That's, that's you showing up in their, in their feed and, and what you do without being spammy. Uh, share an inspirational story. So what have you overcome in your life and how does it tie back into making the person you are or the business you started? Don't sell. Don't worry about that. Tell a story about yourself. Help them get to know you. Remember, that's part of the strategy is being personal. So share those personal stories. You aren't selling yourself, that's fine. Um, again, different groups have different rules, just make sure everything with that is kosher. Um, share a helpful tip, even better if it's related to someone. Maybe a couple of marketers had a thread last week where they're just like, um, I struggle with automatic invoicing. What billing software do you use? Maybe you have a blog that you can share. Maybe you have a, a favorite tool. Um, reference them, like, hey, I saw a couple of marketers dealing with this the other day. I handled this in my business. Here's my suggestions. 
let me know if I can help with any questions. Again, not selling, not spamming, providing value, showing up in their timelines, you're in their view. Your face is on their newsfeed. Um, also, ask for marketing research help. Um, say, I'm trying to figure out X in my business. Um, would any of you be willing to do answer five short questions on a 10 minute Zoom call? Um, I just need to help get dialed in on this. People like to help and it may feel less direct and threatening. Um, so also, another good one here, again, watch the rules, make sure you're not violating anything. Um, post something like, I wanna follow more entrepreneurs and have them in my circle. What's your business page link or Instagram handle? And boom, you're gonna get all of these comments. That post is gonna have tons of visibility. Don't share yours in the post. Do not share yours in the post. Just ask theirs and actually follow them. The good thing is they're volunteering. They're like, oh, I want to connect. This is giving you permission. So you can follow their pages, their Instagrams. And later down in the comments, you can share yours too. But the idea is to get people seeing you and all of the comments people will add on it because they want to jump on the bandwagon will bump the post and your face, your beautiful face will be up on their newsfeed. And um, something that Ryan Dowdy calls uh, coffee chats, but what may be a more comfortable term is networking calls. Just ask if anyone wants to do it. You'll be surprised who responds. They might not be the right person, but I'll get to that in a second. So that's if you're posting, that's if you're the one originating the post. You don't want to just post though. You also want to comment. Um, keep track of what people are saying in there. Again, in time you'll see that there's not much for you in a group, there's not much need, things of that nature. But when you're commenting in general, if you're in the right place, just go with the mindset of being generous. Um, give advice, even recommend other professionals. If they need help with like an email campaign and that's not your bag, but you know a good email writer, you're like, hey, I have a suggestion for you, check out this person. Don't knock good karma, it comes back around. It's really, really good. Um, some of the most generous entrepreneurs I know do really, really well and have a great client flow. Um, by the way, Shannon, I'm looking at you, you're great at this. Um, so when you're commenting for others, give value. This is something you hear all the time. What the heck does give value mean? This is anything that makes their life or day better. If they're sharing good news, congratulations. Boom, you're, you're putting a little bit of value into their life. You're giving value to what they said. They are having a tough day and need sympathy. I'm sorry you're having a rough day, that really sucks. That's an emotional value. And if it's business, even better. But that's what that means by giving value. Um, and again, when it comes to picking what to comment on, try and use the group search function. You can do a word search, you can put it in quotations if you need to like search like a, like a specific set of words, and it can help you. So here's the good thing. If you do run across questions specific to your business and you can't get into it in more detail there, what you can do, and which is a really nice way to move into the, the sacred DM territory, you can say, I deal with this problem every day, um, but I'd like to either learn more or send you a, a more in-depth tool. Is it okay if I DM you? Ask for permission. This is fantastic. And if it's genuinely a problem that they want solved, they'll probably say yes. And then all of a sudden you're able and allowed to communicate with them in this way. That's really good. Sorry. Oh God, I'm gonna be late. <laughs> um, but when it comes to groups, don't post and ghost, don't spray and pray. Um, don't just join a bunch of them and then drop your link and run. That's the equivalent of shouting in a megaphone to a group of strangers. No one cares what you have to say if you do that. You're not building relationships. So focus your situation away where you're building relationships. You're in the right position to build relationships, right kind of people. So that's how you post. Now, send friend requests to people in these groups. Some people do this simultaneously with the posting um, and some people just skip straight to the friend requests or like I said, do it simultaneously. If you're looking for people to friend, look for people who have clean and professional profile pictures they did that intentionally because they're trying to market their business on, on social media. Look at their job descriptions. Are they owner? Are they CEO? Or they, you know what I mean? Um, look for those signs that this is someone who's here for a professional reason. Um, look and see if their job description or business matches the kind of people that you're looking to work with. Are they, you know, like a, a VA? They could run a VA company. Fantastic. Friend them if that's your niche. And another good thing to keep in mind, 
people like to have things in common with you. So look up people who, you know, you can search by group too as far as geography. Are there, you know, I'm from Ohio and maybe there are Ohio entrepreneur groups or, or Columbus, Ohio entrepreneur groups, right? Also, and you can do that with like these people in the groups. Go to the member list of the group, look up people. It often says where they live or where they're from. Try and pick people who are from your home state or something like that. That geographic similarity makes them more willing to trust you. Same with them. You can filter the, the members where a part of the list will show um, people who have stuff in common with you, essentially. And you can pick and friend people who have friends in common, who are in similar groups. And this is another part of the strategy of friending all of these people that keeps compounding over time. And also Facebook likes to suggest friends and that's been a good thing for me too. Anyways, um, but focus on people who have things in common with you because they'll be more likely to uh, connect with you and, and, uh, and interact with you. So some people feel weird about sending friend requests. I understand that because I felt that way too. There is a mental shift you have to do. Um, you are using your Facebook profile for your business and you need to think about it in that way. This is a business connection. And remember, these are people who are in entrepreneur groups. They are here to further their own businesses. So it makes sense to connect with them in a business way. So don't be afraid of that. This is just a, this is just a social media form of networking. It's a different type of networking. Just like if you join a networking group, go to a networking event, have a networking lunch, all of those things. It's just networking. Um, and especially if your profile is clearly set up and your banner photo talks about your business, when you send friend requests, guess what? They're going to know why you're friending them and they can say no. They're allowed to say no. Just don't do the whole jump into their DM, slide into their DM thing. Blah, blah. Don't like it, don't like it. Send the friend request and let it stay there. That's completely kosher, it's fine. Um, bah, 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 bah. So again, some people will accept your friend request. Some people will push back on why you're connecting. That's okay, let it be. Remember, we're trying to focus on people who have the budget to work with us and who are comfortable connecting on social media this way. Let those people go. We can't know right away. We assume that they'd be open to it because they're in an entrepreneur group with us, but that's not always the case. Everyone's a little bit different. Let it go. There are tons and tons of people who are open to this and it's okay. Focus on those people, let those people go. Um, so that's like getting connected, who to connect with and how. Now the tricky thing is trying to figure out, okay, how do I go past the group? This is something I get a lot of questions on and I've been trying to nail it down, but part of the thing is it's just like there's no one perfect way to do this. Um, you have internal individual rules on what's okay. Some people are okay with, you know, friending requests as soon as they join a group. Some people are okay with having five networking calls a day and some people don't like that. Everyone has a different internal measure and you have to figure out what yours is and you don't quite know what others are. So there's, so going past the group, you kind of have to keep trying things. You have to keep trying. I'm definitely gonna be late for my lesson, it's fine. Um, I'm actually gonna text them right now. I'll be a little bit late because I wanna finish this with you guys. Okay, so um, bah, 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 bah. Uh, I'm not gonna say it in Hebrew. Running a few minutes late, sorry guys. <laughs> um, so, okay, so there's no one perfect way to go past the group, but there are ways to get in their lives outside of the group to start developing this relationship. Again, it's a funnel and someone may get to level three of the funnel and that's all, they're not gonna go past it or they stall here for a while and need to follow up with them later. So when you're trying to interact with these people past the group, past that group interaction, once they've accepted your friend request, perfect. Now, whatever you post on your business, on your profile, they have a chance of seeing, right? Right? Um, uh, interact on their timeline. So when you have these, when you make these friends, what are they posting on their timeline? Are they talking about their kids? Are they talking about their business success? Things of that nature. Start showing up in their world, on their turf. Like their posts, comment on them, say congratulations, say how cute their kindergartner so snowsuit is. Um, sometimes they'll share questions or ask for advice on their profile, then share, share information for them. Again, this could also lead to a point that is a more natural breaking in point for talking to them in, in direct messenger. Um, 
if you if they're asking for advice on something and you'd either like more information or want to give a more complex answer ask for permission to dm them it's very effective a lot better if they say yes please i want to hear from you um, 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 um. so coffee chats okay this is something that some people feel good about some people don't something that had helped me mentally um, this is something I learned from Ryan Dowdy. She's great if you guys don't know her. Um, she has the group on censored sales or something like that. Ryan Dowdy, she's great. Um, she encouraged people to do coffee chats. That's what she calls them. If it helps, something that helped me as far as naming it is calling them uh, networking chats. That way it feels much more direct. This is the purpose of why I'm talking to you. Um, this is why we're talking. We're talking to network. That way it's very clear. This is about business. Everyone knows what this is. We're not just being altruistic. This is a networking call. Yes, it's strategic. Yes, you hope that it could turn into business. But something I'll get into later is that's not the only good result of those calls, okay? Or of this whole process, honestly. But a good way to get people to go beyond that, you know, offer it in the group, you know, who's open for a networking call. That way it's not targeted. Or if you do interact multiple times on their profile in their group that's how it feels good for me ask if like hey i'd love to get to know you and your business better maybe we can find ways to help each other out and then you can say you know can we schedule a 15 minute chat just to get to know each other better i'd love to know what you do who you work for stuff like that um so again you're, you're trying to think of how you can help them and part of that may be your business and it may be in other ways too uh also schedule follow-ups so if someone may be talking about how they need financial help but not now um there is a lot you leave on the table if you don't follow up so if something's not on my calendar it doesn't happen so if i talk to someone and they're like i'm interested in trying again in a month or three months or when i have the budget in a month or two i put them on my calendar i put them in my lead tracking app because i want to reach out i know that may feel weird and artificial but think of it more like, um, so you have a lot of birthdays. I have step siblings, I have cousins, I have nieces. I had them in different countries. It's, it's, it doesn't stay up here. So I put reminders in my phone because I want to be intentional because I want to prioritize those relationships. And it doesn't matter if I had an electronic reminder, I made sure that I found a way to remember. Scheduling follow-ups is not a bad thing. All you're doing is checking in and saying like, hey, how are you doing? I know you mentioned that maybe in the future you'd be interested in this or may have help for this. How's your business going? Is there any other way I can help you? Be helpful. Um, I've had people who followed me for six months and didn't say a word, and all of a sudden, boom, they're ready to buy from me. Um, sometimes this takes a while for certain people. Not everyone moves through your funnel at the same rate once they get to the end. And that's why this is frustrating. You're trying to talk to a bunch of people to try and get the few to come out at the end, right? Now, once you do, um, something that worked really well for me in the very beginning, I was in a bookkeeping group and I managed to ask a question in a very careful way. <laughs> I almost got in trouble um, where I said, I'm planning on switching from uh, bookkeeping to content writing for bookkeepers. Is that something you guys would be interested in? So. I didn't sell anything, I didn't have a website, anything like that. I posed a question and asked if there be interest. About 30 people um, were interested. One woman actually called me an hour later and she was my very first client. Um, Amanda, I love you. Um, and um, so from that post, I kept track of everyone who commented. They just said yes, they said interested, and I sent messages to everyone who replied to my post. This is something you can do in the Facebook groups. If you are talking about something that's related to your service or your business, things of that nature, what you can do is um, keep track of who responds, who responds to what you put up there, what you post, and then follow up with them. But make sure that when you follow up, especially if it's, if it's with multiple people, if you're going to send them a DM, make sure the first paragraph is personal. So when I followed up with all of these people, I used pretty much a template of response where I was just like, you know, what are you struggling with in your business? If I can help, just let me know. I'd love to know what you're dealing with as far as content for your business. But the first paragraph, I went for each of these people. I went in their profiles and I found something unique about their profiles um, that happened in the past like month or so. And I made a comment about it. I made it personal. 
and that got me, let's see, that follow-up message got me one, two, at least three clients. Uh, one woman went to a comedy show um, for a comedian that I like, so I found that commonality. See how that works? Um, and again, I wasn't doing a hard sell. They had responded in interest to something that I had talked about related to my business, and I followed up, let them know I was paying attention to them, things of that nature. Um, again, I sent like 30 messages, maybe three or four of them paid off in the long run. That's not bad, that's a pretty good statistic, but I want you to keep that in mind. Not everyone made it to the bottom of this particular funnel instance. They became aware of me, they commented, and I followed up with them. And a lot of them didn't follow through. So keep that in mind when you're struggling with this, when you're getting discouraged with this. Um, again, uh, this is, it takes, it takes some consistency. It takes some figuring out. And there's no perfect way to do it. And so that leads me to my last thing that I want to leave you with is there is no silver bullet. I cannot give you, and no one can, the exact step-by-step -step for what will work every single time. I can't give you a risk-free strategy. I can't give you a guaranteed strategy or a 100% applicable form formula that will lead to success every single time. It's not how that works. This is networking. This is warming up leads. This is building relationships. Again, back to the analogy I used at the beginning, networking, which is what we're doing. We're building leads. We're nurturing leads. These are all relational words, right? Networking is like dating. Think of it that way. You are trying to go to the bars where single people hang out. You are trying to get better at talking to the singles in the bar in the way that they would want to talk to you more. Um, you are trying to get them alone to go on a single date in the future without creeping them out by letting them know that you're a good guy and you have stuff in common, right? Think about it that way. Again, not every time you go to the bar or the group, you're going to find someone to give you your number or go home with you. But you are way more likely to find clients this way than if you stayed home or didn't go to the groups and just played it safe. This is a way of increasing your odds in a way that has worked for lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of other entrepreneurs. But it's not risk-free. There's no guaranteed one way of doing it. There's ways of basically finding the singles bar and increasing your odds of success. And here's something else I want you to keep in mind. As you do this networking, as you talk to all these people in that fat top part of your funnel, um, you will be making progress, but it's not always in ways that you're going to want. You're going to get benefits from this process, that won't always be an email invoice or a recurring client. There are ways that you're building into your business that aren't exactly what you're looking for, but be open to those benefits too. So for example, again, someone you talk to now may, won't, may not be ready for six months, but they know you and they'll keep interacting with you. You could be talking to someone who ends up not really needing your services, but they become an entrepreneur friend and you can trade support. Being an entrepreneur is no joke and having a buddy like that, it matters. So maybe you can provide support and referrals, things of that nature. That's fantastically valuable. Um, someone you talk to could also be like in a related niche and maybe you could do like cross promotional lives or share posts on each other's timelines or your each other's groups some kind of joint venture, things of that nature. They themselves aren't a client, but it can lead to something else. There's a creativity. You have to keep thinking in that sense that all of these conversations lead to a good thing. Um, also, someone may genuinely love who you are, what you do, but they don't have the business, but they want to support the heck out of you. There's a woman who's always great about resharing my posts, my lives. Uh, Anita, if you're watching, you're amazing. Anita always shares my stuff like on her profile. She talks me up. She says, this is my friend. She's got this great business. And that's wonderful. That expands my network and it gives me confidence. That was a benefit of these people who know about my business that I connect with. Um, and also, here's another good thing. As you connect with these other entrepreneurs, again, remember how I told you when you're in these groups and it suggests um, other people you're connected with and it suggests um, and uh, when and I told you to connect with people who have things in common with you, like geography or um, other friends in common, the more good people you get connected with, even if they aren't your clients, they give you more legitimacy so that future people will feel more comfortable connecting with you. Like, oh, she knows Sandra. I like Sandra, we're friends too. All right, 
I'm more open to giving her a chance. So you see how it kind of like snowballs? So this networking through Facebook groups, you are doing lead generation and nurturing, but it's not the only benefit that will come from it. Um, so that's what I have for you. So I hope that helped you guys, because I know that people talk about uh, Facebook groups a lot. If you have questions, of course, reach out to me. Um, I have the content membership, like always. So if you need stuff to post in the groups, I got you covered. And if you want more help, like with like, you know, personalized help coaching through this, I do this as part of my business. I'd be happy to sit down and help you come up with a content strategy and work through this. It's hard getting this stuff off the ground. So if I can help you with this, just let me know. All right, I am miserably late to my Hebrew lesson, so I'm gonna go, <laughs> go jump in before I'm too late. So anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you next week. Bye.